Hey Rizalder here. This video covers how to recycle IPA or isopropyl alcohol using distillation. Using IPA or other solvents to clean resin prints is drastically more effective than water alone. The solvents also evaporate faster, which accelerates the process of safe disposal. But why just discard all of the resin saturated IPA when it can be recycled? The simplest way to recycle IPA is filtration, but filtration alone is imperfect. However, filters do excel at removing chunks and particles of resin, especially once cured. I highly recommend filtering the saturated IPA before attempting distillation to reduce the resin fumes and the death pancake that forms. There are plenty of tutorials on filtering IPA, so I will not go into depth on that topic. The filter setup can be as simple as a cone funnel and a coffee filter. I will link the cone funnel STL I made for a one gallon jug and the coffee filters I used in the description. The operation of the distiller is pretty straightforward. Just pour saturated IPA into the tank and turn it on. The IPA will evaporate and condense into a container outside of the distiller. The result is crystal clear IPA that is ready to be used again in your resin cleaning process, be it manual, wash and cure, or ultrasonic cleaner. It just works. Without the lid, this tank can also be used to force evaporate water saturated with resin. The IPA recovery efficiency is quite good as well. On a test run of 261 grams of clean IPA, the distiller's overheating safety kicks on after a couple minutes and we get 196 grams back. This is an efficiency of 75%. However, there is actually still IPA in the distiller, so if we turn it on again, the distiller will heat for under a minute before turning off. This results in 223 grams recovered, which is an efficiency of 85%. There will still be a small amount of IPA left over that can be recovered, but to keep our calculations later in the video conservative, we will stick with two quick cycles and 85% reclaimed. Household water distillers are reasonable for this application since they should have safeties for overheating and are affordable. However, some safety requirements and best practices should be established. The first requirement for operating one of these is that it should be placed outdoors on a non-flammable surface, which means concrete, gravel, or metal if on a table. Do not use these on a balcony, patio, near grass, next to cars, or anywhere in the remote vicinity of anything flammable whatsoever. A concrete driveway is probably going to be the most common suitable location. Besides the fire hazard of the distiller, Toxic fumes will be released, especially if the resin is not filtered. The second requirement is to babysit the distiller the entire time it is on and heated. A fire can grow considerably in any seconds left unattended. The third requirement is to have fire extinguishers on hand. This is a perfect excuse to stock up on fire extinguishers for the home, garage, and car. Upon receiving a new extinguisher, double check the gauge and when running a distiller, make sure to have it nearby. This is a 10 pound rechargeable fire extinguisher, but a four pound canister will also be sufficient for putting out a distiller fire. I used a four pound canister to put out this demonstration fire. If a fire does break out, disconnect the extension cord at the outlet, pull the pin on the fire extinguisher, aim, and shoot. It is also a best practice to be running AFCI and GFCI breakers slash outlets. A GFCI extension cord is a convenient alternative. These can help prevent fires and shock by disconnecting electricity when a fault is detected. You should also be aware of any local laws regarding the handling and storage of flammable solvents. Additionally, the death pancake inside the distiller can be disposed of as normal waste since it is solidified. This may seem like a lot to process, but this is honestly the minimum when working with flammable solvents near a heat source. However unlikely a fire may seem, it can happen and preparation is key. So the distillation process certainly works, but is it cost effective? For starters, a water distiller goes for about $60. The distiller's rated power is 750 watts, and let's be conservative and say that it takes 15 minutes to distill one liter of IPA. This means the electricity cost will only be three cents to distill a single liter, given our 0 0.1875 kilowatt hours used and its cost of 15 cents per kilowatt hour. 
we also have to account for the recycling efficiency of 85%, which we're able to achieve right out of the box. If we say that a liter bottle of IPA costs $4.20, then we lose $0.63 cents due to the inefficiency. Add this to the electricity, and we lose about $0.66 cents during the distillation process. This means by recycling the IPA using distillation, we save about $3.5 per liter, which means that after recycling 17 liters of IPA, we recuperate the cost of the distiller. After this point, we should be saving money, in addition to the environmental benefit of the recycling, however minuscule it may be. These calculations do not account for any other equipment purchased, such as the GFCI cord, fire extinguishers, or filters. This active approach also prevents insects and animals from poisoning themselves if they gain access to IPA that is slowly curing or evaporating outdoors. In summary, it is possible to save money and effectively recycle IPA using distillation, provided appropriate safety precautions are taken. Please share this video with anyone considering using distillation. If you have any additional tips for recycling IPA, drop them in the comments. For legal reasons, I must mention that this video is for informational purposes and not a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform distillation of IPA. Please do not perform distillation in an unsafe manner or in a locale where it is forbidden. Thanks for watching guys and gals, Aris Alder, out.